Today's piano fun fact is about the Polish pianist Ignacy Jan Paderewski, born in 1862. He was also the Prime Minister of Poland at the end of the First World War. Now our fun fact comes by way of a short story written by the American author William Sidney Porter, who was born just two years after Paderewski in 1862. Now, you probably haven't heard of William Sidney Porter, but you have heard of O. Henry. Not the candy bar O. Henry, but the short story writer O. Period Henry. Now, I had heard on the Golden Girls, that, that old sitcom, uh, there's an episode where Dorothy Spornak, the character played by B. Arthur, says to Rose Nylon, uh, Betty White's character, that, oh, your dad had more stories to tell than O. Henry. Well, she wasn't kidding. O. Henry wrote a lot of stories. And in this particular book, I only have the cover of it for you because it's a library book, but I was looking at it recently over the summer and I found a doozy of a story in it. You're going to have to buckle your seatbelts for this fun fact. As they say, it's about Paderewski and specifically it's about a part of his body. Now, we know him as a great pianist, although much has been written about his hands, which apparently were not pianist's hands. His hands were short, they were small, his thumbs in particular were short, and the third and fourth fingers were almost the same length. Uh, and there are some pictures of his hands, you can see this. Uh, someone, ironically, said that he had the hands of a politician. So... Not the pianist hands had Paderewski. Uh, similarly, when he went to study with the famous Leszczytski in Vienna, now Paderewski was already in his mid to late 20s, and Leszczytski was hardly taking him seriously. He thought it was just a whim that this uh, man wanted to become a concert pianist at the age of, what was it, 27. Far too late, he thought. Um, and Leszczytski told Paderewski, well, with your lips and with your lungs, uh, you are much better suited to play in a concert band, uh, to play the trombone. And Leszczytski remarked that, well, if I asked you to jump out a window, would you do that? And uh, part in jest, I suppose, Paderewski walked over to the window, flew one threw one leg over the windowsill to make as he was going to jump out, and Leszczytski uh, said, ah, enough, I get it, let's begin our studies. And, uh, and, and they worked very hard together. Now I'm building up to this fun fact because it's a really good one. Uh, as a side note to Leszczytski's teaching, he was apparently really hard on his students. Now he was an extremely famous teacher. He had many, many uh, students who would go on to become famous concert pianists and famous teachers in their own right. But he was hard on his students. And Paderewski writes that at one point he wanted to throw rocks at Leszczytski's window. And another of Leszczytski's pupils, uh, Fanny Bloomfield Seisler, a woman pianist, yes, uh, and this is all in the late 19th century, um, she was remarked at having said that if Leszczytski had kicked me out the front steps, I'd have crawled back up the back steps to just to study with him. Imagine having that kind of an effect on a student. Oh, so Paderewski's concert career was begun rather late in his life. And he would go on to become one of the most famous and most successful pianists ever. Now, in the story by O. Henry, we have a story about not Paderewski's hands, not his lips, not his lungs, not his great oration skills, his ability to speak seven languages, not about his knowledge of uh, po politics and great literature, but about his hair. Yes, that great head of fiery red wild hair that audiences came to adore, that chrysanthemum of hair. 
uh, hair that was admired by many, including Queen Victoria. But how did Paderewski come by that hair? How did he get that hair? Well, in this story of O. Henry, we find a very unusual account of how Paderewski got his hair. Now, in this story by O. Henry, he writes about a famous colonel who loved to recount stories to anyone who would listen about all the famous people he knew and the travels he had around the world. And in one, on one occasion, the story involved uh, the colonel having traveled to Africa on a lion hunting expedition with Paderewski and three other individuals, Nathaniel Goodwin, known as Nat Goodwin, he was an American vaudeville actor, uh, born in 1857. And also on this trip were the Boston strong boy, John L. Sullivan, a boxer, born in 1858, and Joseph Pulitzer. Yes, the Pulitzer Prize, that guy. And he was born in 1847. So all of these three, along with the colonel and Paderewski, supposedly in this story by O. Henry, traveled on this lion hunting trip to Africa. Now, on that trip, Goodwin and Sullivan, the actor and the boxer, got into a little bit of a heated argument as to who was the better boxer, because apparently Goodwin was quite athletic and skillful with, with punches. And they were debating who would get the better uppercut if such and such happened, and they really wanted to have a duel right there to, to establish the winner, uh, but they didn't have any boxing gloves. Sitting nearby was Paderewski. Pulitzer was off hunting, but Paderewski was sitting nearby. Apparently everyone liked him, but he was very quiet, and he had this dreamy look on his face, Henry writes. Um, and so Goodwin and Sullivan went over to Paderewski, who at that time, this is supposedly, this is a story, supposedly had jet black hair that went all the way down his back. Black hair is what Paderewski had at the beginning of this story. Lots of it. Now Goodwin and Sullivan, these two guys, decided to go over to Paderewski and cut off all of his black hair. And they divided it up between them and shoved it into the little leather musket or bullet pouches that they had and put their fists in and made a kind of makeshift boxing glove. And they proceeded to, to duke it out. Meantime, Paderewski is wailing and distraught. My hair, my hair, my career, what shall I do? And then that moment, along comes Joseph Pulitzer, this guy here. And he had just shot a lion. <laughs> and he's dragging it by the tail. He must have been a very strong man to drag a dead lion by the tail. Anyhow, he comes upon the scene. He sees the distraught Paderewski with no hair and the other two guys boxing. So he goes over. He says, Paderewski, come here. And they, they whisper a little plot. And in no... No sooner does Pulitzer cut off part of the mane of the lion. And using a measuring tape, he somehow attaches or fixes some of that lion hair onto Paderewski's scalp. Lo and behold, three days later, the hair has been applied. It's now fixed to Paderewski's hair head, and he has this amazing mane of red hair, the red hair that we all come to love and adore, that great chrysanthemum of hair that's been painted by so many through the years, this famous one being by Edward Byrne Jones. And it was said that Paderewski's career became extremely successful after that point, and he wrote Pulitzer a very big check. So that is 
the piano fun fact for today, courtesy of a story by O. Henry. So next time you see one of these at the dollar store or the grocery store in O. Henry bar, think of the stories of the American writer O. Henry and their connection to one of the great, great pianists of the Golden Age.